Welcome everyone to a Padlard Tube Bending Guide. This is something we've done many times in build logs, but I don't think I've actually done a dedicated video for it. So what you're going to need is a heat gun. It doesn't really matter what brand, but it needs to go up to about 400 degrees. And for the heat gun, I use maximum fan and about 350 degrees. You will need, depending on your tube size, a silicon tube insert, and I'm using the one from the EK Tube Bending Kit. So I'm always using 16mm tube, and that's my personal preference, mainly for aesthetics, but also, of course, for performance and flow, using bigger tube is better. You need a texter, just a, any permanent marker is fine, to mark your tube lengths, and a couple of rulers. I also like to use a spirit level. Generally when you are you know, figuring out your angles, you can look at something else in the build and line it up, but it's important to line it up from a lot of different angles. So for example, this tube here, I'm not just going to be looking at it from the front and aligning it with this panel here. I also go around the back and look at it from the other side. Otherwise, you know, you could be working on the build, you're looking at it all from this angle, and then later on you see it from other angles, often after the loop is filled or something, and you have to go back and drain it and fix some of the problems. And, you know, it's something that's really easy to see if you don't get those angles perfect, and, you know, really something that defines the, the, the quality of your build and the, the amount of effort that, that goes into it, I think, getting those angles as good as you can. Now, how much tube do you need? I, you know, I've had obviously a lot of experience and I still do tubes like two or three times before I'm happy with them. So I would allow for like three times average on all of your tubes. So how I actually figure out my lengths, there are, you know, tube bending jigs and things, but I just do all of it freehand because I just like the freedom that it gives me to get the exact shapes that I want to get on the tubes. I prefer to just do it completely by hand and lengths. You just kind of roughly get it with the silicon insert, roughly follow the route you want the tube to follow, and then measure that out on the tube and just add a little bit more, 30 millimeters or something. And then cutting it, I'm using a bandsaw because you know I have one close by, it's quick and easy, but you can just use any kind of hacksaw, the saws and cutting tools that come with the tube bending kits. So just something like that. Now after I cut, I chamfer and I have a, a nice chamfering tool that I picked up for the drill for this and then I like to wash the tube out with water because it just gets out all of those tiny little filings and particles that you may not be able to get out by just blowing the tube and you don't want to be blowing into the tubes really because you know the, the bacteria from your breath from your mouth gets into the tube and just introducing bacteria that you really don't need to. I should mention that the reason I don't use these chamfering tools that come with the tube bending kits is because they go blunt really quickly. So if you're building a lot of systems, you know, they're only really good for about two systems and then you're really going to get a sore wrist trying to use this. So the one that I have for the drill, we can move a lot more quickly with that one. Okay, so for the Heat gun, the distance you want to be away from it, and as I said, about 350 degrees, maybe 300 degrees if you don't want to go so quickly and aggressively. It also depends on the tube. If you have PETG, it heats a lot more quickly and it can bubble a lot easier too. So you need to go a bit of a lower temperature with PETG. I would say 250 to 300 should be fine. And you know maybe it's ready to bend after 20 seconds, but then acrylic and there's different hardnesses you know some of the tubes are harder than others it can be 30 seconds even a minute so <clears throat> that's when you want to go more aggressive on the heat maximum fan and the distance away it's up to you you know you really need to judge it if you go too close and you get bubbles that's it the tube is wrecked you've got to start again so it you know really comes down to experience if you get bubbles go a bit further away if you don't try to go a bit closer, <clears throat> the more impatient you are, the closer you should go. But yeah, I'm usually within 50 millimeters of the heat gun. 
but then as I feel the tube start to soften at the end, I back it off, I get further and further away, because as the tube is softening, you know that it's getting really hot and really close to that point where it's going to start bubbling. So yeah, you just pull back a bit, but you want it as hot as you can get it, because this is the mistake that a lot of people make. If you try to bend the tube when it's not hot enough, unfortunately I don't have that much spare tube. I'm, these are my last pieces for this build. I'm about to run out. I have more coming, but I'll just show you what happens if you don't heat the tube enough and try to bend it. So yeah, when it's ready to bend is really a big question, and I think I actually heated this one a little bit too much. This one's actually good. It's right at the point that it should be. At least if you're just trying to do a 90 degree bend, that's hot enough. But if you're trying to do some offsets and weird shapes, you might want it a little bit hotter. Because that's when you're going to start getting lines and kinks. You can see there's a big line here, big kink. And that's because I'm, I'm 90 degree bending it, but I'm also trying to get an offset in the tube. So it was hot enough for a 90 degree bend, but it's not hot enough for the offset because it's deforming. And that's going to look really ugly later on in the build, particularly if you're using non-opaque coolant. So if you see any kinking, deforming of any kind, you know that the tube is not hot enough. If you see any bubbles, it means that, not that the tube is too hot necessarily, but you've just heated it too quickly. Because you can get it really hot if you're patient to the point where it's just, you know, if you just let it go, it's just going to bend on its own. And that's really where you want it to be. So you start with a tube that is too long, you put a, a bend in it, and you leave overhang on both sides. And then you just put the tube up into position. And yeah, this tube doesn't actually fit here, but you mark the overhang that you have. So let's say the tube goes past this fitting by this much. You just mark a line there, and then you go cut it. And usually what I do is I creep back because it's a little bit hard to judge. So I start about three to five millimeters over. You know, I give it a little bit more. Sometimes it can be hard to see exactly where you need to mark the line. So that's when you need to just slowly cut off more and more until you get it exactly right. But then if you're doing offsets and multiple 90 degree bends in a tube, that's where it really gets difficult so, you know, let's say you want to put a bend here, come around this corner here, but then you want to also bend down. So then you've got, you know, this distance, this distance, and this one to judge. And that middle distance is the hardest one to judge. This is tubes that you should really avoid unless you really want to bend a lot of time and, you know, you've had some experience. Because the reason that length is so hard to judge is because you don't know the radius of the bends, how much tube it's going to use up. You, you know, you can't really mark anything in there and measure it. Measure it. It's, it's pure estimation. So what I do in that case is actually bend it up against the ruler. Now, offsets, similar kind of thing. So I'm just going to do this tube here now, which has a 90 degree bend and also an offset of roughly 30 millimeters down to this fitting. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out roughly where the bend needs to go. Of course, leaving plenty of overhang, so I'm leaving about 20 millimeters of overhang, so I can cut that off later. So because I'm putting an offset in this tube, I've heated it until there's no resistance. Like the only resistance coming from this bend is from the silicon itself. And now I need to move quickly because it's going to cool down really fast. And I actually completely estimate these. Something to watch out for when you're pulling the silicon out is not to put your thumb, grip your thumb onto it, because it extends the silicon and when it snaps back, it actually peels off your thumbnail a little bit. It really hurts. So just keep your thumb up, out of the way. It can be really difficult to get out mainly when it's hot. Something you can do is twist it. The more complicated the bends, obviously the harder it is to get it out. But be careful twisting it too because you can actually break the silicon. 
So let's take a look at this one. It may end up just being a prototype. So I'm just making sure that this fitting here is parallel with the edge of the water block. And I'm just going to put a mark here, leaving an extra couple of millimeters just in case. And also, whatever you're using to cut, it may be a wide blade and it may actually cut off a bit more than you think it will. Okay, so I've just cut down this tube to length where I marked it, I've chamfered it again and I've washed it out with water. And I'm now going to give it a test fit. Okay, so it is still a little bit long on this side, but I'm still going to install it because it may be completely wrong here anyway and then I'll just need to scrap this tube. Okay, this is where something else important I should mention. I use O-ring grease. This is food grade O-ring grease. And yeah, you should use food grade if you can. Because you don't know what all of these O-rings are made out of. Usually it's just buna, but it can be silicon. And just make sure to spread it evenly. You don't want to clump it up inside of the loop where the coolant's going to be running because that's going to actually mix in with the coolant and end up somewhere in the loop. And this will help the O-rings to seal but also make it a lot easier to install because you don't want to be forcing it because you can actually slice these O-rings very easily with the ends of the tube even if you have a chamfer. You can see that the offset on this tube is not quite big enough. This is roughly horizontal here and so the offset needs to be about 10 millimeters longer. So I'm going to have to make this tube again. It's also not quite long enough on this length here. So often what I do, because I'm doing a whole lot of them at once, is just you know put an arrow there, five, and then another arrow here, you know, plus ten. This time I come back to this tube use it as a template and I know that I need a little bit more here, probably five millimeters, but I'm going to give it a lot more. That gives me my marker for where I need to bend. So something that I should have mentioned is that at no point in time should the tube be still above the heat. And when you're doing offsets or complex bends that aren't just the 90 degree bend, you may actually want to heat a little bit more length of the tube. So, you know, the width of the heat from this heat gun is enough if it's just a 90 degree bend, if you just hold the tube still. But for something like this, this offset, you know, you need to heat up a little bit more, like from here to here. Make sure you look at the tube from all angles the offset, you know, you have 90 degrees here, you have 90 degrees here, and don't assume that it's cooled down enough not to bend, because you can let it go and then walk away and then it slightly bends out a little bit and gets out of shape again. So what I normally do is actually run it under cold water when I have my bend, but I don't do this straight away, because when you're bending it by hand, when you first bend it, it's still so easy to bend that it's very hard to hold it in position. So as it's cooling down, as it's getting harder, you can start making micro adjustments. And then, you know, by the time it's gone too hard, you should have finished your micro adjustments. And then that's when you can just quickly run it under cold water just to lock that bend in completely so it won't move again. Actually, something else, if the tube is still quite hot, but you know, it may not actually be hot enough to bend anymore. It's still weaker because it's hot. So if you try to pull the silicon out when it's still quite hot, you can actually very easily break the tube. So same again here with this tube. Just checking that my new tube fits and has the correct offset. So I've just cut this tube again. I'm going to give it another try. Don't burn yourself on the heat gun. I've done that before. Get it out of the way. And yeah, watch out for drops of water in the tube as well. Make sure you give it a good shake out before you start test fitting it because you don't want to get a drop of water on any of the components. The first fitting that you put it into, it depends on the situation, but 
With this one I'm finding it's better to do this one first because this is the hard one because it has you know a lot of axes that it can rotate on because of the way the fittings are set up whereas this one is a fixed point. So I need really need two hands to hold on to this one to get it in and then this one is a lot easier. So now that I know the tube is good and final I'm just putting the retention rings on and then the o-ring and I'm not putting them too far away from the ends of the tube because these retention rings can scratch the tube so you need to be really careful and some retention rings are worse than others depending on the fittings these bits power ones are usually pretty good because this one was such a large offset I had to heat a long length of the tube and you know really this is getting to the point where it should be done in or could be done in two separate bends but I think this time I'm just going to heat a bit more of the tube because you can see that I have to pull pretty tightly on here you know there's a bit of a not a kink but there's a defined point here and a very defined point here I would like that bend to be a bit more gradual so that it's not so squashed as you can see this distance here it really closes up through this bend that's not good and then the same thing again even worse happens here and there's a very defined point on this side and this side it's very crushed so this has happened because I didn't quite heat enough of the tube and tried to pull a very big offset. So I've heated a nice big long length this time and I'm just going to pull the offset into shape and that's actually a little bit too big now so then I'll just let it kind of relax back on its own until it's a similar length. This is actually EK tube. We don't do the Singularity Computers acrylic tube anymore. I did love it a lot and I had a massive stash of it which lasted a long time after we discontinued it. But this EK tube is also really good. It's nice and hard which I like, I prefer. I don't like PETG at all. And actually I don't recommend PETG. It's just too soft to get nice bends with. You know, you need the tube to be firm and stable to get good offsets and bends without kinking and lines forming in the tube, you know, deforming. But the other problem is I actually had some problems with it and I heard some other people had problems with it. Shrinking inside of the fittings, which is obviously worst case scenario because then you get leaks. And this has happened to me twice before. Just be aware if you're twisting tubes like I am here, that you're tightening the fitting, not loosening it. This is how a lot of leaks end up occurring, is all this playing around that you have to do, getting the tubes into the fittings, ends up loosening off some of the connections 